What's good with the YouTube? It's your boy Rojo. It's your boy Flocko from a convict's perspective coming live and direct. And on this episode, man, we're going to do a little something different we've been talking about with the viewers. We're going to be doing a movie review. And so we're going to first start with American Me. The movie that got everybody out there game banging, wanted to be a cholo, wanted to go to Pinta, wanted to be a viejo, wanted to be a prison game member, and just set the streets on fire, man. I can see that there's two movies, um, actually three movies that were instrumental in my life that made me want to get into the, the game culture lifestyle. Colors, of course, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, a little Ice-T song, Colors, Colors, Colors. That was one that really pushed, pushed the tone all throughout California. Boys in the Hood, and then American Me. Yeah. American Me became a, uh, basically a cultural thing. And so we're going to be breaking this movie down in, into basically like three different parts. And the first part we want to talk about is, did we enjoy this movie? You know, me a, a, as a as a watcher, and watch, I still watch this movie from like at least once a year usually. You know what I mean? Out of habit. Likewise. Uh, it's an enjoyable, it's an enjoyable movie. But... The problem with it was there was a lot of theatrics to it, you know, and that's what we're going to discuss. And we're going to come from a whole different perspective from the, the association we used to be associated with, which was the Nostra Familia. We have a whole different perspective of what we've seen. And we're also going to discuss what the Emmy's view of this movie was, because that's well known and documented. So first of all, when we look at American Me, first of all, Santana was Rudolfo Cadena. Cheyenne, he was originally from Bakersfield. And at that time, um, the other individual, JD, is is actually Joe Peg Lake Morgan. They never had they never had no type of affiliation, you know. Uh, one was from Bakersfield, and one was from Maravilla. So that that was the first misconception, right? As far as within that movie, the second part, right, which becomes really it's really a an extreme issue, was the scene when Santana was actually raped. That was a big issue within the Mexican mafia, because within the within the, the Mexican mafia there will be no form of a, a how do you say it? We don't want to be censored, but there'll be no no a, a none male, of that stuff. Male on yeah. male on male bonding is, is the best way to put it, man. Yeah. And so, you know, when you watch this movie, it, it kind of tried to ca categorize the MA as being a, a superpower game, which in some senses it was. But I think one of the main issues that I have right from the organization I was associated with was the way that they portrayed the Nuestra Familia in the movie. Um, you hear that one scene where they're, they're all out to court, and that is true. Back in the days, they used to, to be subpoenaed to different courts so that all the members could be in one facility. This is how they get to communications with like prisons like Chino, Folsom, uh, San Quentin, Vacaville, Susanville. I mean, Soledad, they, they would get all their members in one place and they, they would do their communications because at that time, a lot of these organizations, the NF included, actually had attorneys on the payroll from the criminal activities out there in the streets. And there's that scene where I think it's an individual named uh, Mundo or, or was it, yeah, it was Mundo, the, 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 act, the person that was portraying Mundo, where they say, oh, they're nothing but a bunch of lame farmers from up north. And see, the whole misconception behind that movie and that part is this, is at that time when Cheyenne was, a, 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 or Santana was still an active Mexican Mafia member, all the original New Esther Familia members were originally from down south. They weren't known as a bunch of farmers. And in fact, I got confirmation today. The first NF member that was ever recruited from Northern California was actually Black Bob. Does that shock you right there? No, that sounds about right. You know, so that's an issue. You know what I mean? It, it creates the, the North-South. I mean, if you're going to put a movie out there, you know, and you're going to use actually their names. Like, see, the difference between this and Blood and Blood Out was these organizations were fake. You know, we're going to get into Blood and Blood Out later on. But at that time, the, the NF were originally from down south, from like from Oxnard, Chiquez, um, San Diego, Manavilla, um, Santa Barbara, um, Chino, all these little small towns that are, that are out there, you know. And even there was some that were originally from L.A., as a matter of fact. So that's a big misconception. Such as the issue that they have with the Italian mob, right? As far as they had a working relationship, believe it or not, so did the NF. But when they showed the scene to where they they uh, um, did something to his son, and, and then they 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 went in there and and did a holiday. As far as they they hired the Africanos to go in there and 
hit one of their stash spots. All that is misconceived. You know what I'm saying? It is not actual facts of, of what really was transpiring at that time. Um, through through Pay Lake Morgan, that the Mexican Mafia did have a relationship with the Italian zone. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They used to protect them in certain facilities. But as far as seeing that they use brute force, as as far as uh, uh, you know, the scene where you see it, where like they, you know, what was it? Here's the Mundo Ramos or whatever, or whatever yeah. it is, right? Yeah. And they decided to take take his manhood, man. <laughs> Those type of situations never happened. No, they would have just they would have just booked him, you know. And the other scene that trips me out too, right, is that little like riot when they said when they burnt the dude for stash. You know, you're not gonna sit there with your whole crew, especially your, your main MA leadership. You're not gonna take off your shirt, right? Like you're ready to get down and say, you know, what do you want to do, doc? Yeah. You know, toe to toe from the chest, or we can all get down. <laughs> I mean, these MA members had security blankets on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The same way the NF did it. Like anybody that was a high ranking NF member at the time, right? Uh, uh, as far as I think from I think Lieutenant on up, if I'm correct, right, would have security blankets on them. You know what I mean, at least one or two soldados on them, because they would be in leadership positions. And I would think that would hold true of a lot of these Mexican mafia members. So you wouldn't see no scene like that where they're like, hey, you know. He Santana takes off his off his shirt and is ready to get down. I mean, those are all theatrics. Yeah, you know what I mean. I can see them getting down and getting busy, right? But as far as you have a situation where everybody has knives and they're burning stuff and they're all like meet about to meet, I mean, it looked like you know it looked like you ever seen those European fighters where like you know one side's wearing red, one side's wearing blue. Yeah, and they meet up and they start chunking them. Yeah, that's how that whole. Oh situation. yeah, the Russians. Those are Russians. Yeah, those they Russians be getting man. busy, yeah, man. Crazy. So those are that's some of the misconceptions that you see in this movie, man. And as well as how they portrayed how the NF Familianos look, man. They made them look like they were basically like, so basically like some dudes that are working in the fields. You know what I mean? Yeah. They gave them a little bit of credit where, where they're like, uh, they're already getting a, a too big in Vacaville to make a move on and all that kind of stuff. So they, they threw in a little bit of props at some point in time. So you know what I mean? But just like them, you know, portraying the fact that Cheyenne was killed by his own people. You know, they, 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 they downplayed the NF significance at that time for sure. Yeah, and they, I mean, that was a big deal too. Like, we all know the uh, the scene in Chino Palm Hall where they, where they killed him and threw him off the tier. The Mexican Mafia was really offended by that. You know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't the enemy that did it. It was actually the NF. And the way that it actually did occur was he didn't just come out there and, you know, hey, do what you guys are going to do, you know, you know. He came out and he actually had bodyguards on him. You know what I'm saying? They had to flank his bodyguards to get to him. And he wasn't the only one that was thrown off the tier. There was another individual that was actually thrown off the tier when they actually hit him. And there's a couple other people that got booked in the process. So in watching this movie, like I said, it's it's very entertaining. You know, especially if you're, you're from the, uh, uh, you know, the Chicano culture, the gang banging scene. And it had a whole, whole influence on the communities. But where Edward James almost didn't do it right is if you're going to use the title Mexican Mafia Emmy, then let's do the movie how it is. Let's do it the right way. Like I just watched that that Kilroy movie, right? Really good movie. You know what I'm saying? This was Kilroy's truth. It was what they experienced and what they went through during their times, and it was a lot more accurate than than, than the American Me. Now American Me's production was good. It had a lot of good actors, but it was more for theatrics. You as far as the the main the big movies like that and like Blood In Blood Out Bound by Honor, it is probably the most you know close to being authentic. You know what I mean? Because you know even for the average viewer, you know you could really you know overlook some of the small you know inaccurate portrayals of events that happened in it. You know it's way more accurate than like Blood In Blood Out for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's still Hollywood, you know what I mean? And there's still going to be certain parts that are going to be glamorized, you know, just for whatever reason, you know, to generate, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've learned that through reading books and doing research. Every time I watch a true story, I start to do research and I notice that they'll put theatrics like different relationships and so forth, man. And the same thing with, with Pie Face Ortega, when they show him in the, in the movie getting killed on the weight bench. Now, he never got killed. He actually turned informant. Actually, I think he was one of the first or second informants ever in Mexican Mafia history. Yeah, back what you were saying, though, about, you know, the impact that Colors had and, you know, American Me on, on the culture nationwide. I mean, I, I lived in, in Houston when damn Colors dropped and all of a sudden 
everybody and their brother and sister and uncle and everybody just thought they were a blood or a crip or whatever you know it's like man they were just starting whole crip neighborhoods out there that no none of them have even been to la or nothing then i was actually in juvenile hall in california when american me dropped and i just remember it was me and probably like five other homeboys sitting there watching it and you know we thought we were like all cool because there was a movie about something that we were kind of involved with you know what i mean and uh yeah, it's a trip man how something like hollywood has such a major impact man and people are like oh that's how it is that's how it is man it could be totally 100 percent fake man but if it's presented in the in some kind of way you know it's gonna have people you know following it and trying to embrace it and taking it as is you know what i'm saying and the big thing about this movie right is Let's look at the, the MA history, even the NF history. In the 80s, it was very silent. Yeah, very. Even out there on the streets, there was not a lot of lot of uh, Mexican Mafia activities. If there was, it was very discreet. I would have to say, as far as the prison gang organization's activities out on the streets, the 80s was probably one of the most quiet times in history. You had a little skirmishes where people got out there and started taking care of business, but a lot of them were locked up at that time. So this movie created a pivotal role and the MA started to have an influence back on the streets. Because what did you see after that? You started seeing the no drive-by. You started having all the hoods be taxed. You know what I'm saying? You had all these individuals come out there on the streets. Uh, Chewy, uh, that dude Boxer. All these other MA members started going out there. And they had a whole different agenda. That movie gave them power. Yeah. To where they could reach out there on the streets. No, they used it to their advantage for sure. You know, but they were, like I said, in, in reviewing this movie... I knew a lot of Mexican Mafia members were really, really offended. And it, and it was basically by the two scenes, man. Actually, three scenes. But the, the major one was the issue that happened with Santana and Juvenile Hall. Because if that was to occur, they have said numerous times, he would have never been pulled as an MA member. The second one was is how they looked at them as far as, uh, 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 how you say it, taking man's menhood. Yeah, there ain't none of that going on. You know what I'm saying? And if it was, it would be more discreet. Yeah, you know not, what I'm saying? The but they, the they, were, the, they were offended kitchen. that they were offended that it was advertised, you know, like when he was having that scene with, with the woman and then he just felt like it was a man and he he, he turned around like like yeah. he was digging into a man, you know what I yeah. mean? He's yeah. like stop, like you know what I mean? Like yeah, never, no you don't know how to make love to a woman. They were offended yeah. by stuff like that. Oh, of course. You know like they were like like the like there's any history of how that dude conducted himself in the bedroom, like come on, get real. You know, yeah. And like and the other one was the, the Italian mob scene. You know what I'm saying? portraying them what they did to that dude and they're like you know as punishment you know I mean uh, uh and getting off on it you know I mean it was kind of it was kind of a crazy scene that everybody says all my american me you i mean after that people had a lot of influence on the streets and then like i said the final scene that had the issue was the the uh the scene at the end of the movie you know and how they portrayed like a lot of ma members will say that yeah there was issues as you, as you watched in the kill Red movie which maybe we're going to go over eventually um that there was issues with a little bit with Cheyenne at the end because of the, the agenda that he had. But there's not to say that he was actually on bad standings, you know. There's no proof that the MA set him up to get killed by the NF. There's been all kinds of rumors. And he was trying to unify a lot of these factions, though, in, in towards one agenda. And he was met with some backlash. But there's no proof that, you know, he was ahead of his time. You know what I'm saying? You know, he wanted that peace and he had a whole different agenda to, to be revolutionary. You know, one thing I always tripped on over that movie, too, is uh, the scene where they supposedly had the BGF guys take down their stash house and made them all snort all that H and they all died right there. Like, I wonder if that's any kind of significance in actual history. You know, you remember what, what I'm talking about when he's like, breathe, and he yeah, stuffed his face in the then H they, and then stuff. They had, then they had the AB do the hit for them on the, on yeah. the street. I can mean? see them working with AB, but I mean, like, I, I just don't see that whole BGF making you know seven ma associates nine ma associates snort that stuff until they died i've never heard nothing else in history that would cooperate that scene personally the, 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 see that's the thing the ma and bgf's issues has only been in the prison walls for my that's yeah that's what i thought too you know i mean the nf and, and ma had skirmishes on the streets and even abs yeah. you know what i'm saying because it would be common for the nf to to go try to hunt down abs as i read numerous numerous documents man um but the thing is that happened with this movie was um, them feeling offended, man. There was a lot of repercussions behind it, man. You had Charles, Charlie Brown, Manriquez, a Mexican Mafia member 
who he was found, I think it was around March of 1992, inside, inside some housing project, right? He, he was found dead. He was slain there. Yeah. You know what I mean? You also had that lady, Alan, uh, what's her name? The gang lady? Yeah. A community youth counselor. She was a, a paid consultant to the movie, and she was shot to death in front of her home, man. And she was a community leader out there in the streets trying to help the kids. I remember there's an actual documentary about the fallout behind that movie, man. Oh, it was, it was uh, either on Netflix or you can find it somewhere. You know, I got one of them jailbroke fire sticks so I can find whatever. But there's a whole documentary about all the people that, you know, were ended up coming up short behind that movie. And the list is long. Well, there's also Manuel Rocky Luna, who was another MA member. He was killed about a year, year later. And then, you know, Edward James almost, you know, there's there's a whole document of where they extorted him. Yeah. And somehow he had a lawsuit going on uh, uh, towards this, or I forgot the whole details of it, but he was subpoenaed and, and, and sequestered and, and interrogated by the feds at that time. And somehow, you know, he felt threatened, you know. He, he actually contacted the FBI when all this was going on. And they actually had security on him as far as his own, he had to hire his own detailed security on him. And there's been speculations. This is speculation. This is a perspective. This is not factual, okay? So, but we've heard, and I think even uh, uh, a couple other ex MA members have, have quoted this, that he actually paid some type of sum. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, that's how offensive this movie has, has, has become. Now, overall, my conclusion of the movie, it was, it was an awesome movie, man. You know, but you just got to read between the lines and, and know your history and know that you're watching theatrics. You're watching entertainment. And since then, there hasn't really been any any of these major production companies. They haven't wanted to touch any movies <laughs> no. on the Prison Games because no. of that movie. Yeah. Hey, I even seen uh, on uh, Danny Trujillo, Danny Trio, the, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Um, I seen him do an interview on Vlad talking about that whole situation where, you know, the extortion and how... Uh, Mr. Almost contacted him to try to get him to help, and he met up with one of their big homies from down south with, with, and all kinds of things, trying to get that little thing squashed and taken care of. Man, that's on Vlad TV. It was a good interview. I've seen that recently, too. So, you know, there's a lot of people have touched on it, man. And you notice, just like Flacco said, there hasn't been any other things. I mean, even though the genre is great and there's a, a an extreme opportunity to make a lot of money, you know, portraying, you know, this the history between these two organizations or each one by themselves, Hollywood's not trying to touch it no more because they've seen the, the ramifications from it. And they, they, they didn't realize how serious it was and, you know, their false portrayals and, you know, offending, you know, some people that just, they're just not playing and, and they're not touching nothing. You know, Hollywood was accountable for all this stuff too, though, man. They gave influence and rise to the gang movies around the time in the 80s and 90s. No without doubt. a doubt, man. I mean, that was the strongest influence. I mean, American me. I mean, I had homeboys that were really trying to dress like these dudes, man. I know guys that know like almost every scene in the movie, word for word. You put it on and they're sitting there talking right along with it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, people, they tell jokes about it. You yeah. mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's been part of the culture. So that's the only problem that I have with this movie is, is the influence it had in these communities. Because it made people want to be that big homie. Right. Whereas before in the 80s, like I said, neither one of these organizations really had a stronghold on the streets. You know, yeah. All that has since changed. Yeah, either that or it was just real, real, real under the radar, man. But the the reach has definitely gotten stronger over the years. You know, one hundred percent. In closing, man, basically, American Me is 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 probably the most authentic out of all the prison movies I've seen. You know what I mean? Shot Caller is pretty good too. You know, it's it's somewhat accurate. You know, from from that point of view. You know, there's a, obviously going to be a little Hollywood on everything, but uh, American Me was a good flick, man, all the way around. And it's only because, you know, we lived in this lifestyle that we're able to critique it, you know, from a, a real historical, you know, accurate historical perspective. Yeah, with that said, man, we just wanted to give a little quick movie review on this one, man. Like I said, it's a very good entertaining movie, man, but a lot of theatrics, man. And we wanted to give you a little bit of perspective of what we thought about it, man. And I say, in addition, before I close, the portrayal that they gave of the NF was not accurate at all. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if someone wanted to put their two cents in this movie to try to make the, the NF look like a bunch of lame farmers, as they say. But those aren't facts. That's, those are not facts, man. At that time, man, when, when Cheyenne was out there, I say the majority of the of the NF members were originally from down south. They weren't even from up north yet. Yeah. 
So they need to get their facts straight. So that was almost to me like someone was trying to dissuade individuals in how they looked at the NF. You know, but that gave a lot of rise to a lot of Northerners, North Daniels. Like you would see it when you were getting it, when we were educating these young Northerners, you know, we were telling them like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Look, look what they think of us. We're nothing but a bunch of lame farmers. Yeah. So this gave a lot of North Daniels a little inspiration behind the wall. Like, yeah, we're up from up north, but we're still going to be out here representing. Yeah. We're still going to take out take off our shirts. We're not going to pay taxes. That was the agenda that was being pushed at that, at that time. So like that, with that said, man, you know, I know I've been rambling on, man. It's been a while since I've seen Rojo or did a video. I've been going live a lot, but man, we got the raffle. You know, hit the cash out app. It's it's a 50-50 raffle, right? So whatever we get at the end of next week, we're gonna we're gonna pick a select, we're gonna pick a lucky winner, and you're gonna get you're gonna get fifty percent of that cash prize. All proceeds are gonna go to help what we're trying to do, update our equipment, hopefully me, get me some better internet. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You know, yep. and all kinds of stuff, man. Like we're 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 making moves, man. Um, we got this artwork on deck too, man. Coming up soon, we're gonna start doing original man we got we got some really crazy artwork coming up man from nf people from whoever man we got it and we're going to do the same thing man we're going to have an online auction five dollar tickets for that you know and, and what we might do is like with the really really dope ones that come from either really famous people or the artwork's just really spectacular we're going to do a limited edition run on some shirts or some hoodies or whatnot and then we're going to auction off the original piece of artwork, you know, with who it's from, when it was done, where it was done at, etc. So, you know, that's in the works real soon. This merchandise is about to, it's about to, it, it's right in the final stages of closing down, man. So, yeah, just stay tuned. And like I said before, Flacco's going to run into Gunner somewhere at a, at a location, you know what I mean? And they're going to put out some really, really powerful information for you guys this weekend. And uh, last thing, last thing, we've been rambling this video, but make sure you check out the membership, man. You guys have a lot more action at seeing some stuff that we don't necessarily put out all the time. And uh, you'll have exclusive views on that kind of stuff, man. With that said, this is Rojo from A Convict's Perspective. It's your boy Flacco. And we're out of here. Oh, oh, oh.